If you saw last week's video, you'll know how much we're enjoying the sailing life and how much we're looking forward to getting out next year. However, before we get there, we have to face our toughest challenge yet. A true test of our resolve. Da, da, da. In order to get to spring, we have to pass through winter. And having lived on boats for the past 11 years, we know the challenges we'll be facing and we're really not looking forward to it. Our original plan was that we would be crossing the Atlantic to the Caribbean right now to cheat our way out of winter. But as the boat was nowhere near ready, we had that 10 weeks in France and now we find ourselves back here opening up winter clothes boxes. Winter is tough for so many people as it has mental health implications. Hugh suffers with SAD. He's learned to manage it with regular exercise and keeping busy, but it's still a huge consideration in any decisions that we make. So, what's the problem with living on a boat during the winter? One, you really notice the lack of light. One of the most beautiful things about living on a boat is that you become connected to the outdoors. You notice every change. You know the second it starts to rain. Sometimes I've been in my parents' house and it's only when I step outside that I realise that it's raining. Being so connected to nature is one of the things I love about being on a boat. But it does mean that we notice the second it starts to get dark outside. And darkness always makes us feel glum. We have some lights inside, but they're not the brightest. So Hugh came up with a cosy and warm fuzzy solution to add as much light as we possibly could inside. We've had this set of string lights ever since we bought the boat. They've illuminated our entire build, from the days working in our makeshift tent ripping up the deck to the refit inside last winter. They are annoying because when you try to film, they flicker on camera, but in real life, they have added a real warm and cosy, almost Christmassy feel that lifts our mood in the darkest of nights. Two, the biggest challenge to any boater during the winter is managing condensation. This is a major issue on boats. We've had years of battling this, so at least we know what to expect, but it doesn't make it any easier. If you fail to keep on top of it, things get damp and then they start to go mouldy. And we have a lot of things on board at the moment due to emptying our locker into the boat and the children owning about a billion teddies. So we have to be doubly vigilant. We can try and reduce condensation a little by changing the way we do things, like not allowing the kettle to boil fully, cooking food in the oven instead of on the top, and if you do cook on the hob, every pan needs a lid. The other day, Hugh stumbled across the idea of filling the small sink with cold water to drain the saucepans in. It seemed to help reduce the steam a bit. However, the main cause of condensation is something that we can't really do much about. Breathing. Every morning, the windows are saturated, and so we are having to go round and wipe them. We have about 30 windows, so Hugh had an idea to insulate them all using bubble wrap. Right, this is how the internet told me to do this. Um, my plan is to do two layers. Water. Look at that. It's a win for the internet. And then my plan is to do a second one that goes around all the frame for each one as well. Ridiculous, but for 10 quid around the whole boat. When the sun's out, it makes such a difference. We can no longer see out, but they are perfectly dry but that moisture has to go somewhere, hence our main winter weapon, meet Dennis, our trusty dehumidifier. On this note, if you want any advice on buying dehumidifiers, Hugh is an expert. This guy has to work 24 seven. Check this out. All this moisture was collected from the air in 24 hours. Well done, Dennis. It does, however, mean our electric bills will be higher and we have a constant hum in our ears, but winter is all about compromises. Number three, getting washing dry. I don't think there is many shots of our boat over the summer that didn't include our washing drying up and down the side of the boat. You can't do that so easily in the winter and we don't want the extra moisture hanging up inside. So we have bought a tumble dryer to see us through. We don't have any room for it inside, so it lives in the cockpit, but it will make life easier through the winter. Number four, keeping warm. People are always concerned as to whether we are warm enough on the boat. And the answer is yes. For a start, we have lived on boats long enough that we can tolerate the cold a lot better. Almost to the point where when we go to someone's house and they have the heating on, it becomes stifling. When we bought the boat, it came with a diesel heating system, but we disconnected it whilst rebuilding the forward cabins. So we are using electric heaters for now. 
a job for next week will be to reconnect it. Sometimes we even do novel things like wearing jumpers inside. We spoke to a couple who are just in the process of installing a log burner. We had one on the Dutch barge and we loved it. However, we plan on this being our last winter aboard, so we don't think it's worth it for us. Luckily, a boat is only a small space, so you can heat it pretty easily. The kids are toasty in their quarters. We need to insulate our room before the cold really kicks in. Hugh has picked up some insulation board on Marketplace. Another job for this week. Number five, losing space. In the summer, you double your living space as you spend so much time out on deck. We basically have another three rooms in the summer, if we count the back table section, the cockpit area and the forward deck. And I'm not even including the back garden, which is the sea. In the winter, we live entirely inside, so it feels like we have lost a lot of space. Or we could just call it cosy. And it does feel like that now with the Christmas lights up. Number six, where you tie up. We spent all of last summer in a lovely marina and got to know some fantastic people. However, we decided to spend winter elsewhere, hoping for more of the same, but with a different view out of the window. Unfortunately, this didn't work out, as we were the only people living there, so it felt pretty lonely. If we learnt one thing about sailing in France, it was how much we need other people to thrive. As soon as we met up with another sailing family and cruised alongside them, we realised how good it felt to be surrounded by like-minded people. This will be a key factor in getting us through winter, so we have moved back to what we know. When you surround yourself with people who are going through the same thing, overcoming the same winter-on-a-boat problems, people who have interesting things to say, have new ideas to try, new stories to listen to, free advice and help, then you realise that winter won't be that bad after all. The boating community is a marvellous and magical thing and is not to be underestimated in its value. I just saw something someone posted on Facebook and it read, Remember, stress doesn't come from what's going on in your life. It comes from what you think is going on in your life. And I've always been one to try and look on the bright side. Winter doesn't have to be hard if we tackle it with the right attitude. So with that in mind, I will conclude with my reasons to be cheerful. One, we know what to expect and we can anticipate the worst bits and put things in place to manage it. Two, we have a clear objective to work towards. Spring is not that far off. And if we keep ourselves busy with boat projects, before we know it, we will emerge as beautiful butterflies. Three, it's Christmas soon, a time for seeing family and friends and for the kids to enjoy some magic. Although please, Santa, no more teddies. Four, hopefully this will be our last winter and we will be sailing across the Atlantic this time next year. Five, so far we have a solution for each of the problems. And although it's a hassle to have to wipe all the surfaces every day, keep things aerated, keep checking every corner for mould, we just need to see it as a way of preserving what we have worked so hard to create. <laughs>